there's not much difference. Um, it's a real blend that started in the early 1900s. And secular humanism, Gramsci and Marxism, like represented by the Frankfurt School, and later on postmodernism all began to flow together. The early secular humanists, uh, such as John Dewey, who was called in our country the father of American public education, was just absolutely enthralled with what Stalin was doing in Russia to indoctrinate their school children. And he went to the Soviet Union and learned their method and brought it home and introduced it to American public education. And the same thing with the Frankfurt School. They fled from Germany. A lot of them were Jewish by religion or race, and they were also atheists and Marxists. And so they got out of Hitler's Germany, came to the U.S., set up shop, and began to make this influence. So it's a confluence of three worldviews into, you know, the best thing you can describe it as is a postmodern secular materialism, because it's bits of Marxism, it's bits of humanism, and bits of postmodernism. And we're going through a neo-Marxist phase right now, but due to the technological revolution and the role that technology is playing in censoring things, you've even had trouble with that there in Australia, um, it's actually morphing into fascism. It's a whole new breed of totalitarianism. And what we're seeing in the woke experience, um, as if they woked to the dangers of conservatism, uh, in reality, what they woke to is the fact that a large part of the people hadn't been moving with them over the last 50 years. We kept looking at them going, and you're going where with this radical viewpoint of yours? you know? And suddenly the woke people woke up uh, in our country due to the elections in 2008 and the election of President Trump to the fact that over half of the population hadn't moved with them. And that's what they have woke to, uh, declaring us now to be evil. That's their viewpoint. We're very evil. And um, they are the great and the good. And so anything they do to us is okay, even violence. Even though they preach peace, they practice violence. They preach inclusivity, but practice exclusivity. They preach tolerance, but practice intolerance. Um, I can go through the, I have five characteristics of postmodern thinking that is what affects wokeism. And I, as I say this, I'm very concerned about even the people who advocate some of these things, like cancel culture. First thing I say to Christians is you need to understand cancel culture cancels Christ. Yeah. Because these two worldviews are incompatible, period. There's no way you can put these two things together. But since it's based on postmodernism, and if we can just boil postmodernism down simply, it's that there are no absolutes. Remember, they've rejected logic and reason. There are no absolutes. We make our own worldviews and clarify our own values as to what is true or not true. And it is arrogant um, that anyone should judge anybody else's worldview, any one culture should judge another person's culture. So that's where this all started from. Of course, it starts off with a, with a fundamental flaw. It says there is no thing, such thing as absolute truth. Well, the first thing you ask them then is, do you believe that absolutely? <laughs> and if there's no way out of that. Um, you, you cannot believe there's no absolute truth and then turn around by starting with an absolute. All worldviews, even Christianity, start with a couple of assumptions that they assume to be true. 